What's good YouTube? Welcome back. Today it is the Lazy Days channel and we're back at it again with some more history reaction for you guys today and we're doing some epic history TV's content for you, the Napoleonic Wars and we're doing Wellington's Triumphs of Victoria. 1813 we really enjoy his content over here on this page a link Love for it. his page will be in the description box down below if you haven't checked out his content already we're enjoying this series and Loving i think it, we mate. just want to start so if you're liking it don't forget to uh, hit the like button notification bell hit the subscribe button down below and let's jump into this while the allied armies had seized the initiative and were on the march the French armies were scattered all over Spain. Marshal Jordan, Chief of Staff to King Joseph of Spain. We need the little ball that bounces. May 1830. That's what we need, man. <laughs> While Napoleon's Grande Armée began its fight back in Central Europe following the disastrous invasion of Russia, 1,200 miles away, at the other end of Napoleon's embattled empire, Another enemy was poised to strike. The previous year, Wellington's Anglo-Portuguese army had won a brilliant victory at Salamanca, but been held at Burgos and forced into a long, demoralizing retreat back to the Portuguese frontier. But after a winter of rest, reinforcement and training, Wellington's army was stronger than ever. 100,000 men many of them battle-hardened veterans. Oh, oh, yeah. And for the first time, he had sufficient cavalry and artillery, while transport and medical services had also been improved. Morale was sky high. Their chief, known to the troops as Old Nosy, was cheered wherever he went. I never saw the British army so healthy or so strong, Wellington informed London. In contrast, the French position in Spain was weaker than ever. Napoleon severely underestimated the threat posed by Wellington, and mm -hmm. had just withdrawn 20,000 French troops for his own use in Germany. As commander-in-chief, King Joseph knew his forces were overstretched. Napoleon allowed him to give up Madrid, and move his capital to the more easily defended Valladolid. Okay. Yeah. But withdrawing further to a strong position like the Ebro River was out of the question. That would send the wrong message to neutral Austria and Napoleon's wavering German allies. Mm -hmm. And so, with serious concerns, Joseph and his chief of staff, Marshal Jourdan, awaited Wellington's offensive. In a few days, we shall take the field. The campaign bids fair to be most brilliant I hope to see the Pyrenees before September. Lieutenant George Simmons, 95th Rifles Regiment, 30th of April, 1813. Come on! <laughs> Smashed it! Wellington's plan was for his army to advance in two wings, concentrate at Toro, then move against Joseph's forces. In the south, Murray's Anglo-Sicilian Spanish force, based in Alicante, had just repelled an attack by Marshal Suchet at the Battle of Castalla. Okay. Murray would now mount a diversionary landing on the Mediterranean coast to coincide with Wellington's advance and mm. prevent Suchet sending reinforcements north. Wellington had also counted on large-scale support from Spanish regular forces, of which he was, since November 1812, theoretically commander-in-chief. But the yeah. Spanish Cortes, based in Cadiz, was deeply divided, with many still highly suspicious of British motives. The result was that Wellington yeah. would only receive direct support from a few reliable Spanish divisions. Is that it? Fortunately, yeah. he would receive considerable Spanish support from the guerrillas, now yeah, better really. armed, organized, and Not operating in greater numbers than ever before. <sighs> Absolutely. A large area of Valencia had effectively been liberated by El Fraile, the friar. Esposimina had captured major towns in Navarre and was currently oh, really? keeping General Clausel's Army of the North busy. Oh, while Juan really, Martín really Díaz, aka El Empecinado, 
was tying down large numbers of French troops near Madrid. Yeah, it seems like the Gordas are really putting in some work. Yeah. Really Farewell, Portugal. I shall never see you again. Marquis? Yeah, Marquis of Wellington. Portuguese frontier, May, May 1813. On the 22nd of May, Wellington bid farewell to Portugal and began his advance. Four days later, he was in Salamanca, from where he joined the northern wing of his army under Sir Thomas Graham. Okay. Joseph and Jourdan expected Wellington's main thrust to come from Salamanca, okay. so planned to defend the line of the Douro River. Makes sense. But yeah. Graham's rapid advance north of the river meant they'd already been outflanked and they ordered a retreat. By a series of brilliant marches, Wellington continued threatening the French right flank, forcing Joseph to keep falling back. Nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's Wellington's army was able to use small roads and mountain tracks north of the main highway, which the French had dismissed as impassable. But thanks to his Spanish allies, Who knew the area? Wellington knew yeah. better. Nice. That's so smart, man. Backed by British sea power, he was also now able to switch his supply base from Lisbon to Santander, mm, even drastically quicker. reducing the length of his supply lines, oh. another feat the French had written off as impossible. At the Ebro River, the French found themselves outflanked yet again and fell back to Vitoria. Oh, Wellington's just Here, pushing up. Joseph yeah. decided that he must make his stand. Good on Joseph. The Zadora yeah, River Valley, something. west of Vitoria, seemed to offer a strong defensive position. Expecting an attack from the west, French forces were drawn up in three lines. Oh, General Gazon's Army of the South formed the first line. I feel like he's going to have Then fun. General Derlon's Army of the Centre. Then General Rey's Army of Portugal. Joseph hoped that he could at least buy time for the vast wagon convoy assembled east of the city to get away. It contained not only military supplies, but his government's treasury. Okay. And as satirized by this oh. contemporary British cartoon, the accumulated loot of five years French occupation of Spain, including mm. priceless works of art, jewels, and antiques. He's trying yeah. to round up the He also train. expected General Clausel <laughs> to arrive with 20,000 reinforcements oh, any geez. day. However, yeah. thanks to the guerrillas, Wellington was better informed of Clausel's whereabouts okay. than Joseph himself. <laughs> Knowing that Clausel couldn't reach Joseph before the 22nd of June, he decided to attack on the 21st. Okay. The day okay. before, yeah, yeah, yeah. French patrols reported enemy troop movement to the north. So Reyes' troops were moved to cover any threat to the army's line of communications. Apart from one division, which left to escort part of the wagon convoy to France. An odd decision that deprived the army of 4,000 men on the eve of battle. Oh. Marshal Jourdan had been bedridden but with fever that... There's a question of why would he send 4,000 to just with a certain load of it? Because they were high official ranking officers, most likely, or high official people, governments. No, this this leaving. was the wagon of stuff they were nicking. Yeah, I'd imagine there were also high officials yeah. that were leaving as well. Okay. I'd imagine, I'm, I'm not too sure. For some reason, I've just got it in my mind that there was something in particular they didn't want the British to get their hands on. There probably was. There probably was. But 4,000 men. 4,000 men, that's a lot of men. That is a lot. You would have thought only a couple hundred. Yeah, I, I was assuming just a few hundred, yeah, not 4,000. A few hundred, 4,000 is a lot. And you've got the British coming at you as well, which is yeah. not exactly the smartest idea. Not at all. Fever that day. The next morning, he reconnoitred the army's position with King Joseph. They agreed that their position was overextended mm, very and much. should be shortened. But by the time their orders reached General Gazan, it was too late. He was already under attack. A sharp firing on the right gave us notice that the ball had been opened. Second Lieutenant George Lestrange, 31st Regiment of the Foot. Wellington, enjoying the advantage in numbers for once, 
had decided to attack in four columns across a ten-mile front. But, yeah, he's outgunned, but he's got a lot, a lot of them. Yeah. You're talking like, I think it's 8,000? It's... No, 18,000? I just My don't... My maths is completely wrong. Sorry, go on. Why would you take 4,000 men away? Yeah, I know, I know. It just doesn't yeah, make that, sense. Yeah, that would have put him at 6-1, at least. It doesn't make sense. Yeah. With General Graham's left-hand column threatening Joseph's line of retreat. It was a bold plan, with the potential to trap and destroy Joseph's army, but required careful coordination and precise timing. Fortunately, the French had not thought it necessary to destroy any of the bridges over the Zadora River, which was also fordable in oh, several places. God. At 8 a.m., the first thing General Hill's done. column began its attack on the Allied right. Spanish and British troops advanced up the western heights of Puebla, driving off French skirmishers and forcing General Gazan to send reinforcements to secure his left flank. Hill's troops then seized the village of Subiana, but French cannon fire and counterattacks prevented any further advance. So oh. Convinced that there. Hill's attack was the main assault, and that troop movements to the north were probably a diversion, Jordan continued to send troops from the centre to reinforce the left. Wow. This was exactly what Wellington wanted. But oh. at 11am, he was waiting with growing impatience for his other columns to go into action. Lord Dalhousie's 7th Division, supposed to be leading the attack by the centre-left column, had got held up in the mountains. Oh no. While further east, Graham's flanking move had got off to a cautious start. But seeing the size of the approaching force, General Ray decided to pull back his troops across the Zadora River. This encouraged Graham to get things moving. Mm. Colonel Longa's no, Spanish quick. division advanced on Durano, held by Spanish troops loyal to King Joseph, and a bitter struggle for the village ensued. British and Portuguese infantry advanced against Gamara Mayor. They were soon engaged in bloody street fighting with the French. Mm, my Lord. This scene shows an attack by the 4th King's Own Regiment of Foot and the 47th Lancashire Regiment. Though they succeeded in driving the French out of the village, they could not cross its bridge over the Zadora, which was expertly covered by French guns. Why didn't they just burn it? I don't know why they didn't burn it. I just, uh, it doesn't make sense. Come on, you rascals. Come on, you fighting villains. <laughs> I don't know why that accent come out. I don't know. It just, <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't know. I just saw you rascals, man. You rascals. <laughs> you know, just like an angry Scottish man. I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm going to continue. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, British Third Division. <laughs> Around oh, noon, a Spanish peasant uh, informed Wellington that the bridge at Tres God. Puentes was completely unguarded. He immediately ordered Kent's elite light infantry brigade to dash across it and secure a bridgehead. They but there was the still little guarded. sign of Dalhousie's He's, 7th Division. They left it intact. General <laughs> Picton, the notoriously short-tempered commander of the fighting 3rd Division, ran out of patience. Mm. Fed up with waiting for Dalhousie, he Sounds ordered like his men do. to advance. They charged across the Mendoza Bridge <laughs> and a nearby ford, driving back light French defences. Okay. General Gazon, with his left flank pinned down main... at Subiana, was now about to be outflanked on his right, and had no option but to pull back his troops. Yeah. Wellington's army was now crossing the Zadora River in force. I mean, now he's now he's fine. Heavy fighting to continued to rage on the heights of Puebla, but here the French also had to give ground yeah. to maintain the cohesion of their new line. Scottish Highlanders and Connaught Rangers supported by riflemen and Portuguese but troops, now stormed the, the village of Agnes, routing the defenders, who retreated southeast, and a gap began to emerge in the French centre oh between right. Gazan's army of the south and Derlon's well, army up. of the centre. 
The Allied advance continued, with heavy pressure on both French yeah. flanks. Wellington's army appeared to be building unstoppable momentum. Why did you with say Graham's appear? column poised to cut off Joseph's escape? He's a slippery little bastard. Something's going to happen. Though. Yeah, I feel <laughs> Joseph's going to get away, man. Yeah, he's he's just going to slip through the net. I don't feel comfortable with this. <laughs> Artillery and musketry were heard in one continuous... Uninterrupted. There you go. Volume of sound. The fire had already become exceedingly violent. Captain Andrew Lilith Hay, Wellington's staff... Jesus. Yeah, Jesus indeed. By 4 p.m., Wellington's army was formed up across the Zadora, ready to strike a decisive blow. But his infantry came under heavy fire from 76 French guns, blasting great holes mm. in their ranks. Allied guns were brought forward to provide support. The biggest artillery duel of the Peninsula War began. More than 70 guns on each side. Ah. Allied skirmishers, exploiting the gap in the French centre near Gometcha, were able to work their way behind the French guns mm. and shoot down mm. their crews. Yes, mm. you slippery little bastards. That, that, that is smart. so good and oh, so sick. Mate. Do you know what I mean? I <sighs> Cut the lads just see again. Go on, boys, go! Literally, I reckon it was that. They, like, I reckon a captain has gone, look, Give me these. No, I reckon they're all in men. it. They're just having it out. Yeah. A couple of, one, just one or two good lads have just gone, come on, lads, let's go. And they've just <laughs> ran for it. That would be my idea. Yeah. I love that. Oh, my God. But instead of trying to close up with their line yeah. to his north, on his own initiative, he ordered a retreat that left Erlon's own left flank completely exposed. Oh, no. Around the same time, God. Longa's Spanish troops finally captured Durana. Oh, and rumours swept the French army that their escape route had been cut. Derlon's army of the centre fought on bravely, withdrawing to another new defensive line just one mile west of Vittoria. They're French still, guns like kept up a steady here. fire yeah, on the advancing Allied flanked. lines, but once more the position was outflanked. Around 5.30pm, King Joseph bowed to the inevitable and ordered a general retreat. Mm. Oh. Five million dollars were abandoned by the French and left upon the ground. Oh my god. Yeah. Essing. It's insane. George. Ensign George Bell, 34th Cumberland Regiment of Foot. Jeez. Yeah, Jesus indeed. As the main road to France had now been cut by Longa's Spanish troops, the army would have to retreat east towards Pamplona, along a single narrow road with boggy fields on either side. Bad enough for thousands of troops and guns, but there had been no attempt to move off the army's enormous convoy of wagons earlier in the day. The result was pandemonium as military units and artillery tried to force their way through the streets of Vittoria and the congested lanes and fields beyond. Oh no. Oh my god. You imagine that. That would be terrible. The task of forming a rear guard fell to General Reyes' Army of Portugal, which conducted an organised withdrawal covered by its cavalry. Wellington hoped that Graham's column would now be surging across the Zadora River to cut off the French army's retreat. But? But Graham, overestimating the enemy's strength, continued to take a cautious approach. East of Vittoria, the French retreat descended into total chaos. The single narrow road became blocked. Wagons that took to the fields got stuck and were abandoned. Allied cavalry fell upon this confused mass, spreading panic and meeting little serious opposition. King Joseph and Marshal Jourdan themselves the narrowly escaped capture. How? Among the abandoned wagons, many civilians, including officers, wives and children, priceless mm -hmm. paintings, jewels and furniture. I'm sorry, but my man just left his wife and kids. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> my man just left his wife and kids in a wagon. Yeah. Bon voyage! <laughs> this is fucking crazy. Absolutely crazy. 
Oh, Imagine mate. just leaving your wife and kids. You're just like, look, love, I can't do this. Uh, like, wow. Wow. I find that wow. fucking brilliant. That's disgusting, cuz. It is, it's wrong. It's, so it's wrong. wrong. It's but so it's, wrong. it's the front. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh I, I just can't believe it. Many of them just left their wife and kids. Yeah, well. yeah, and the furniture. <laughs> and more than five million gold francs. I'd leave the L-shaped sofa. Troops but on I'd, both sides I'd take broke the wrecks and dived <laughs> into an orgy of plundering. One British officer described the scene. About dusk, the head of our column came suddenly on some wagons which had been abandoned by the enemy. Someone called out, they are money carts. No sooner were the words uttered than the division broke, as if by word of command. And in an instant, the covers disappeared from the wagons, and nothing was seen but a mass of inverted legs, while the arms were groping for dollars. For money, it certainly was. Wow. The scene was disgraceful, but at the same yeah. time, yeah. ludicrous. Yeah. Wellington, however, was furious. Yeah. Not only did the plundering delay pursuit of the enemy, but giant sums of cash, which might have paid for his army's supplies, vanished into private pockets instead. Mm. Of 5.5 oh, million yeah, francs, just only 250,000 were ever recovered by the army. Oh. Oh my God! At a wow. five point five million, wow, two hundred and fifty thousand was recovered. Wow! Oh God! Oh God! And that was the day, the crime born. <laughs> <laughs> one of the generals should just start shooting. That's the only way you. Yeah, but one of the generals, like that was the division, and his men just broke off, like. Yeah, and what you do is you say you don't stop, otherwise I'm gonna have to start shooting and get the division over here. It's crazy. They lost over five million. (laughs) Vittoria was a great victory for the coalition, not as crushing as it might have been, reflected in relatively light French casualties. Wow. But in the chaotic retreat that That followed, the Allies did capture better. Uh, I mean, only. No. I mean, it was a. It's less than two thousand. For both, but wounded, horrifically more. Yeah, wounded is horrifically more. Captured mission. Yeah, two thousand eight hundred. Numbers are low. Numbers are low. I don't think they're that high. They're all no, but they got... two of one hundred and fifty-three French guns, and even Jourdan's Marshal's Battle. Oh. Oh dear. Yeah, he actually picked up his bat and found it. Hmm. You have sent me among the trophies of your unrivaled fame, the baton of the French, of a French marshal, and I send you in return that of England. The British army will hail it with rapturous. Rapturous. Enthusiasm, so, enthusiasm. Yeah. The Prince Regent to Field Marshal Lord Wellington, the 5th of July, 1813. I wonder if they still have that in a museum or something. They probably do. We'll have a look. We'll Google it after that. If you know, if it's in a museum or somewhere, comment down below. Yeah, let us know. French military power in Iberia was broken. The Bonapartist Kingdom of Spain was at an end. Joseph returned to France to face his brother's criticism. Marshal Jourdan retired from active service. Napoleon sent Marshal Soult to replace them, but even his shrewd military mind could not turn the tide no, in Spain. I don't think so. Yeah, Counter-attacks no. to relieve the French garrisons at Pamplona and San Sebastian were defeated. That autumn, Wellington began what proved an unstoppable advance across the Pyrenees and into France. Mm. In southern Spain, where Marshal Suchet remained undefeated, the disaster at Vitoria forced him also to withdraw towards the frontier, yeah, leaving to. behind just a few isolated garrisons. After a bitter five-year struggle, the Allies had brought the Peninsular War to the Spanish their War of Independence. 
to a victorious conclusion. That's crazy. Mm. It had been a long, hard road, steeped in blood and suffering. The alliance between Britain and Spain had been particularly treacherous to navigate. But ultimately, both nations had fought together with Portugal to drive the French back across the Pyrenees. Teamwork New research teamwork. provides <laughs> clearer insight than ever into the huge attrition of French manpower in Iberia. An estimated total of 260,000 lives lost. Three quarters died of sickness. Of approximately 66,000 deaths from combat, 43% were in actions against Spanish regular mm. forces, 38% fighting British-led armies, and 19% fighting Oof. guerrillas. No, just... <sighs> yeah, sickness, man. 194,000 died of sickness yeah, alone. Bro. Yeah, bro. That's, that is just incredible. <laughs> that is shocking. Because the thing, well, it's like, it's it's like exhaustion and sickness, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, like you, you've been in three battles, you're exhausted, and then the sickness is going to get you. Stuff uh, yeah. like that. Yeah, you know? the gorillas. Yeah, the gorillas. They did a lot. By contrast, British military deaths are estimated at 52,000. Portuguese, 15,000, mm. with many more thousands of civilian deaths, while Spanish deaths are unknown though the country as a whole may have lost as many as half a million lives wow. in five years of war and occupation. For Napoleon, this disaster had been an unnecessary and largely self-inflicted wound, mm. an intervention born of arrogance and false assumptions, with dire strategic consequences. <coughs> but as the Napoleonic <laughs> Empire crumbled in Spain, an even greater struggle neared its climax in Central Europe, where Napoleon faced the most powerful coalition of his enemies yet. Hey, if the French the Emperor was time, victorious yeah. in Germany, Wellington I'm might soon be scrambling back Again. across oh, the no. Pyrenees. The fate of Europe was about to be decided at the Battle of Leipzig. Oh, the destruction is in chaos. Absolutely chaos. I really enjoyed that episode. What about yourself? Yeah, man. This is, I'm loving the series yeah. so much. Yeah. Only a couple episodes left. So if you're enjoying our reaction to it and you're looking forward to the last two episodes, then like, comment, subscribe, subscribe. hit that notification bell, and we will catch you in the next video. See you in a bit.